what does chocolate do? It actually helps uh, also helps the gut bacteria, by the way. Um, also uh, improves brain function. These are foods that do not just one thing, but they do multiple things uh, to light up your life, including vision, including brain health, including heart health, including muscle function. It's time for us to actually take control of our own health by understanding our own body and understanding what it is that we actually love to eat and where the science is that can support the things that we should eat that can help us improve our immune systems and lower inflammation and kind of contend with the world so that we can go back out and regain our lives and be and act more freely in ways that are actually just better for us. Even if we didn't have the pandemic, we'd actually be able to live longer, healthier, better lives. So that's one of the things that I want to share with you. I'm really proud to share with you. And here's here's sort of like one of my key messages. There's no single superfood. It's really the body that is actually superb uh, in terms of how it's reaction. So I'm going to tell you about how the body responds. So let's get started. Now, if you want sort of what I call grand slammer foods, these are foods that do not just one thing, but they do multiple things uh, to light up your life. Okay, light up your health, including vision, including brain health, including heart health, including muscle function. If you're trying to be fit and you're working out and you want better muscles, you need to regenerate your muscles, be better blood flow. So I like that. I'm going to give three grand slamming foods that I think are just winners. Number one, key. All right. Tea is the second most commonly drank beverage in the world. I, I have one as well, okay? Uh, and we used to think that green tea was like the best. Probably is. But recent research has shown that green tea, oolong tea, black tea, even super fermented tea like uh, pu'er tea, which is a, a tea from Southwest China, all light up your health. Better for gut health, better for circulation, better for brain health, lower depression, improves your blood pressure. Amazing uh, uh, but scientifically shown and clinically shown benefits of tea is one category to add in your life. Um, by the way, don't add sugar to your tea. All right. Drink it as straight as you can. And if you're going to add sugar, be, if you're going to put sweeteners, you can use honey, you can use sort of more natural sweeteners. Just don't dump chunk lots and lots of, of, uh, uh, cane sugar uh, into it. Um, uh, and dot and dairy too. This, I'm giving you some fine points here. Uh, uh, but they're practical. I think people like practical yeah, things. You absolutely. know, the British tea is actually to use milk in your tea, the afternoon tea, have a little milk or cream to your tea. A lot of people like that. Look, yeah, the polyphenols in the tea, the catechins that are good for us, that's what lights up your life. They get caught in the little soap bubbles that, that dairy, cow dairy actually forms in tea. These are invisible soap bubbles. You can't see them. But chemically, they form soap bubbles. When you drink it, actually, um, the, the, the good stuff, the catechins, actually are still stuck in the bubble and they just go right through your stomach. And so you only absorb maybe 30% of the good stuff. The rest of it just kind of tumbles out of you. All right. And so if you want to get the most, I always talk about getting the most out of whatever effort you're doing. If you hold back on the dairy, nut milk is okay. It's the cow milk that actually forms those bubbles. So almond milk, soy milk, all those are fine if you want to cut it. Um, uh, that's a to tea or something to include. Second, berries. I'm, could, I'm using berries as a category. So you get to choose your own. All right, strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, lingonberries, you pick your huckleberries, pick your own wherever you are. They are tiny but powerful because the bright colors, the blues, the reds, the oranges are all made with, are all caused by, and, and, the, and the amazing flavors that, that pop out of a ripe berry is actually made with, uh, is, is caused by these bioactives, but polyphenols, the elagic acid, the anthocyanins, that really, really light up your health in all kinds of different ways. And by the way, for berries, here's something practical. Look, I'm a big believer in going to the farmer's market and buying the seasonal fresh berries. But here's the thing. You can actually get frozen berries, which are less expensive. And you can buy them in bulk and store them in your freezer. And easier to deal with. Okay. And they have the same bioactive value. They're picked from the field, flash frozen, and you're good. So second, berries. Choose your own. They're all good fresh or frozen, I'd still recommend that you go for those. Now that you have some room, because you've removed other things. Third thing that I would actually tell you is brassica, which is a category of vegetable. All right. If you're in Asia, that'd be bok choy, gai lan. These are all the kinds of very common. If you go to your local Asian grocery store, almost all the fresh greens in the produce section are going to be brassica. All right. But if you're on the other side, the Mediterranean, which you also know is a super healthy way of eating, you're talking about your 
broccoli. You're talking about your black kale, the ca- Tuscan kale, the cavallinero. You're talking about your cauliflower, um, all kinds of different types of greens of different sorts. Great source of dietary fire, great source of bioactives that actually light up your brain health and light up um, your blood vessel, your vascular health, and light up your immune health while lowering inflammation. And you get to choose from the repertoire of Mediterranean recipes going back generations or the repertoire of Asian recipes to be able to find ways to take the salad bar, which I find one of the most boring things that you can actually encounter, and to turn it into something that you would actually look forward to eating to. Uh, look forward to eating because it really, really tastes great. So the three things I would say, tea, berries, and this whole brassica side that you'd find in the produce section of either the Mediterranean market or grocery store or the Asian market. And now there's no excuse not to be able to find something green that you'd like to eat. Now, here's another really cool research set. This is really, really new. It um, was pu- published in the journal Nature Medicine. It was a study from the Cleveland Clinic, which is a major medical center. Remember, I told you all science-based information that's rigorously done, generating the evidence that you know you can trust because it's science. This was a study of 7 million people. That's a big study. They looked in the electronic medical records. They looked for diseases that these people had of 7 million people, and they looked at the medicines they were having to see if there's any correlations. Was there any medicine that somebody was taking that might lower disease? Guess what they found? They found there was one medicine that lowered the risk of Alzheimer's disease by 67%. Wow. In the study of 7 million people, no bias, just going in there and using a computer to figure out were there any medicines people were taking that lowered any disease? One medicine lowered the risk of Alzheimer's disease by 67%. What was that medicine? Guess what? Viagra for erectile dysfunction. People taking Viagra for erectile dysfunction had the lower risk of Alzheimer's disease by 67%. Holy cow. How would that work? Well, it turns out Viagra not only dilates the blood vessels in your genitals, okay? It also dilates the blood vessels in your brain, better circulation for your brain. And the way it dilates blood vessels, widens blood vessels is through something called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide stimulates stem cells to regenerate your um, organs. So not only do you have better blood flow in your brain, you also have more stem cells in your brain. Remember I told you about the Chinese celery and the stem cells that treat stroke? So now this is an interesting piece of research that asks what else could stimulate nitric oxide that might be able to stimulate stem cells, um, uh, widen blood vessels that might be able to do what we observe with Viagra. So this is actually an area of research I'm doing right now. Guess what? There's a food that will do that and I will tell you what it is. Beets. Beets actually will grow low to the ground, and so does spinach, absorb a lot of nitrogen from the soil, and when you chew it, the gut bacteria that starts in your tongue, tongue microbiome, converts the nitrogen from the soil in the beet into a form that when you swallow it, gets absorbed into your bloodstream as nitric oxide. Does something very similar to Viagra, without genital effect, obviously. Um, but that's now a really interesting area of research to wonder whether or not beets, and by the way, if you don't like regular beets or can't find them, beet juice, look at this. It's, now, this has been studied in humans and shown to also um, recruit stem cells and lower blood pressure. By the way, for every one point of blood pressure you lower with beet juice, you decrease the risk of stroke by 5%. So this is stuff that makes a difference. It's been studied in humans quite amazing. Do you want to talk about heart health and brain health is stress? Chronic stress, which, you know, I've had as much as you guys, really puts an undue burden on our health. Now, one thing it does, stress causes our adrenal glands, which sit on top of our kidneys to release a lot of cortisol. Uh, it, it puts a demand on our heart. Our heart beats faster. It also changes our microbiome. It ricks our blood vessels, our circulation. It screws up our stem cells and it lowers our immunity. It causes us to be more inflamed. So how do we actually lower stress? Well, there are, it's not just food, it's lifestyle as well. So getting enough sleep, exercising lowers stress, being with friends and family safely, um, uh, family, by the way, that you like, uh, actually can lower stress. But I do want to tell you, share with you some interesting stuff. So um, uh, eating this can actually help you lower stress as well. This is a bar of chocolate. This is 86% chocolate. Anything over 80 
while she do it. It's cacao, dark chocolate. I tell you, I, I, it's this is chocolate I helped to create with a friend of mine, Katrina Markov. Um, she has figured out somehow how to make really dark chocolate, completely smooth, not bitter at all. And so I'm just with Vosges chocolate, called a line of chocolate called Pure Plant. So research have actually studied healthy volunteers who are stressed out and they uh, measured their blood in their urine to look for stress markers. And what they did is they gave them dark chocolate, kind of like what I just showed you, um, dark chocolate to eat for a couple of weeks, two weeks. And they found that um, when they measured in the blood and in the urine for people who they eat chocolate, the stress markers, eating chocolate lowered cortisol, um, lowered adrenaline, and lowered these stress markers um, uh, in their urine as well. And so high anxiety people can lower their stress markers by eating chocolate. Now what does chocolate do? It actually helps, uh, also helps the gut bacteria, by the way, um, also uh, improves brain function. Uh, and also really, really dark chocolate with cacao has fiber in it. So most people don't think about um, uh, chocolate, dark chocolate having fiber, but it actually does.